everybody, and welcome to the Infinity Show Reviews. This is James Cork, and whoa, we have a special episode with uh, for you today. With me, I have Roman Sanso. Hello. <laughs> that was very dry. Also, <laughs> <laughs> brony reviewer Silverquill. I don't know why anything is anything anymore. Is it because you're under my spell? Because no one explains a damn thing in this movie. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. And super energetic Ronnie reviewer, Ty and Daga. Hello, everybody. And in case you didn't know, or you didn't by the title, we are going to be reviewing the second Equestria Girls movie, subtitled Rainbow Rocks. And, uh, well, how do you introduce this movie? It's Rainbow Rocks, that's it. It's a movie that people were talking about during all of summer 2014. They were going nuts about it, they were going crazy about it. So... Well, it's been a year since it first came out, and what do you guys make of this one? Like, what what are your thoughts on it? Like, um, and as always, inverted alphabetical order. We're gonna start with uh, the new kid on the block here, Ty and Daga. Uh, so, Ty, what do you think of this movie? I thought, oh, honestly, course. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, it is called Rainbow Rocks, obviously. So, music was a heavy theme that uh, sort of w- was prominent throughout. Um, and the music was really good. Uh, you know, I, I caught myself actually tapping my toes a little bit from time to time, but I, I regretfully say that because I'm, I'm such a, a rap enthusiast. So for me, tapping my toes to this sort of music is very different. However, it was enjoyable and there was clearly a lot of effort put into it. Um, the movie, however, now here, here's, here's the thing. I didn't see the first one, the, the first Equestria Girls. <gasps> No one shot. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, no, wait. Hang on. I'm reloading. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. Yeah, okay. come on. He's firing on all That's stuff. illegal in your state. Uh, hang on, Bambi's mom. I'm sending <laughs> you company. <laughs> oh, God. I will keep you in heaven. Things got really grim really fast. Uh, but either way, I haven't seen the first one. But it wasn't really too hard to sort of pick up the second one, uh, the one that we're reviewing today. And... Uh, it, it was good, though. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. All right. And it's, what about you, Silver? I, too, enjoyed some of the music, but it's always that generic, we're all friends lyrics. The beats are catchy. They'll, they'll stick in your head. But the lyrics are always sort of, we needed something that would sound good on a kid's soundtrack. Let's not go crazy here. When I think of the music from the show, uh, it's usually linked to a character or a specific event, and that's what makes it memorable and stand out this movie you could almost swap some of the songs in place and it wouldn't be too different now plot wise it did a lot more right than the first movie now the focus is more on the human world it's the movie starts in the human world we stay in the human world uh it's not waiting for twilight to escape back to equestria and get out of this freaky place of bipeds but uh, more, okay, you're in these this world of bipeds now, and here's Sunset Shimmer. Root for her. <laughs> you can make all the Taco Tuesday jokes you want. Sunset Shimmer stole the show. <laughs> Depends on who your waifu is. <laughs> some people will fight you for uh, for Sonata over Sunset. I, uh, and and I, it gets really creepy. Well, let's uh, we'll, we'll save that for when we talk about the climax of the movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And uh, what about you, Norman? When we talk about sequels, like sequels from the first one, usually the first movie, it's okay. And the second movie has to step it up or improve a bit. And uh, let's go for video games. Like we had the first Mega Man. It was fun. Nothing special. And then when the second one came out, the controls were better. The music was good. The level design it was awesome. So... Carrying that to this one, it somehow works. Like, I felt the movie was much more better in terms of story. Music was there. And the characters of the show, well, I kind of knew who they were and I wanted to know more of them. Technically, I just like this movie. There's nothing that I say that turned me off. I've seen it twice, thrice, and a few times. And I like this movie. Well, I'm going to be the unpopular opinion on this one. I already predicted. Uh, <laughs> I, when this movie came out, I didn't watch it for like two or three months. 
Everybody was going crazy over it. They they were saying, oh my god, it's so great, it's fantastic, it's so much better than the first one. They fix everything and they don't do anything wrong. It's fantastic, it's awesome, it's just perfect. Oh, they if they don't nominate this for an Oscar, they are just idiots. Oh, screw the Lego movie, this movie is so much better, blah, blah, blah. No, seriously, they were hyperbolic about their opinion on this movie. And I said, I'm going to wait until it dies out, the, the hype and everything. It didn't die out. By the time I watched it, people were still going crazy. The whole Taco Tuesday, Sonata here and all that, blah, blah, blah. So I watched it, and this movie does things better than the first one, but it also does other things worse. It's not better than the first one. I will put it on the, fir- on the same level. Like, I don't know why people saw, saw this one as a much better movie than the, than the, than the, first, than the first film. So I'm like, yeah, okay, it's fine, but I don't really want to watch it again. I watched it once, and I don't think I want to watch it again. Like, th- this is the first time that I'm looking at the movie, looking at the wiki page. Uh, so I know what scene we're talking about, or I, I know about the details of uh, of each part that we're going to talk about. But, yeah, I don't know. I'm not very hard about this one, guys. I don't know. I I, I, I didn't go crazy over it. Well, here's the thing. When I say that I like it, it's for me. It was I wasn't expecting Oscar-nominated movie awards better than the Lego Movie. I wasn't expecting high-budget movie. I was expecting okay. This was the first Equestria Girls movie. It was like this. Now I'm comparing you to the previous one. Let's see how well you improve. And if you're talking about the same level of them, yes, it improves a bit more. But will it fight Frozen? Will it fight the Lego movie? No. <laughs> what What are you thinking comparing them to them? No. no. Blasphemy. Let's be realistic here. Yeah. yeah no. if, if you're going to make that comparison, you should just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> no, Silver, don't do that again. Uh, but, you know. No, okay. don't. Com- don't you dare, you oversized pigeon. Do you want to sing a parody? <laughs> do you want to deal with YouTube? And it's content ID. <laughs> They're gonna flog this video and we will not be able to monetize it. <laughs> oh, well, even comparing with the resurrection of F. No, you just don't. Uh, this is a completely different kind of movie. Uh, we're gonna have to talk about it now. So we're gonna go deep into spoilers. Um, if you haven't watched it, uh, come on, don't kid yourself. You have watched the movie already. You, you don't, you don't need to worry about this. So let's talk about this one. Uh, Since we're going to go through themes, I think we should start with the one thing that the movie presents us right away, is that the the three new villains, the the Sirens, we didn't have any build-up for these characters prior to the movie, right? They didn't have any comic or any... uh, Anything else? This is the, literally the very first time that we see them. Well, I, I do like the introduction of the sirens in this one, where we get introduced to them in the restaurant causing havoc. We kind of guess who, what they are. Like, we we guess they're bad guys for the movie. They have magics to suck evil or negative powers, and that's about it. But what made my interest spark for them was the timing of when they were introduced. And this was introduced during the end of the fall formal. So, ooh, they were there. They saw it. And now they're going to cause havoc. So technically this That's was... kind of clever. Yeah, I know. So this technically this was one week after the fall formal, something like that. that that's all I'm, how I'm looking at it. Of course, they we haven't talked about their true threats, which is not their voices... Which also was done very well in terms of a visual introduction to their power. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, the green mist around the uh, restaurant, everyone arguing, but then they reveal their true power, TARDIS technology. <laughs> that is the only way that much hair could fit within those hoodies. <laughs> oh, so true. It's true. <laughs> uh, I expect yeah. when they, I expect when they're changing their clothes, I hear, <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! There was a th- th- there was a piece of fun art or something of a dad you trying to put her <laughs> hair inside her hoodie, and the only thing that is 
coming out of the hoodie is just more hair. <laughs> Merida from Brave is telling you to tone it down, lady. You have too much hair on that I've hair of yours. I've seen that one. I've seen that one. Am I, am I the only one who's having trouble remembering their names? Because to me, they are Sonata Taco, Adagio, and the third one. <laughs> yeah, the third like, one, the third one has no presence. Yes, she doesn't. I'm working on a review video of this, and I've realized, good lord, I've gone the whole th- way through without mentioning this character even once, and nothing suffered for it. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, not the only one who thinks that. Yes, I thought I was alone in the world. <laughs> on my end, on my end, um, at first, I got no idea who they were. All I knew was Adagio and Sonata, and the third one. Who was the third one? I had to wiki it just... Okay, the situation is I was reading in bed, and I was thinking, who the heck was the third one? I had to wiki it just so I can find out, because it was killing me. And its name is Arya Blaze. All right, okay. And the only reason I can remember is I'm reading fanfiction about them. That's about it. So if it's not because of fanfiction... I got no idea who they are. Sorry, there's only one fantasy character named Arya that I will support, and she's on. She's currently away from Westeros. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you were to believe the last uh, episode, uh, she just lost her sight. Oh God! Uh, you know. I read the books. I can tell you some things. <laughs> oh by oh the no, way. no no no! Shush! Don't <laughs> say anything. <laughs> but by the way, Ty, what about you? Well, I, I really like the villains. Um, of course, at the start, they weren't very powerful, so they couldn't just use sheer force to get what they wanted. They sort of had to manipulate situations and, you know, work sneaky, sneaky to get what they wanted and to really get to a point where they had, you know, their true power back. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I like that in a villain more than just a super powered, overpowered monster that comes in and destroys everything. No, I, I like the villains that have to manipulate, you know, use charisma and, and think their way through the problems, not just power their way through. So did you remember all three of them? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you guys say, the third one, I still don't remember the name. What was it? Area Blaze or something? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was Area Blaze. I, 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 I try to write story. that down. It's keeping me up at night. Um, it really isn't. You, but... you see, is that they, 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 I, I, there is a problem with the three guys, the, 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 these three villains, is that there is nothing new to them. They are the typical, the, the typical villain team out that you can have in any other uh, movie of this type. You have the cute, clumsy one, you have the leader, and you have the forgettable one. There is nothing interesting going for them except by the way they are designed. And I'm going to be honest, guys, the only one that looks all right design-wise is uh, Sonata. Mm-hmm. The other two just look like they, they do look like the only thing they're, they're, they're missing is like oh wait hang on what's that is it a price tag what is that doing there so, so I just take it off it's like they literally look like the toys it's like this they, they, there is no inspiration no nothing when it comes to the other two oh but but uh, James you're you're forgetting the other accessory that Adagio needs oh. and I and I realized what? this I realized this in the third act of the movie. As every time she tried to make a threatening face, I started giggling uncontrollably. What is it? It's a big billboard for that forehead of his <laughs> that says, I'm evil. <laughs> wow. Because you need to just slap that in place because that forehead is an aircraft carrier. <laughs> oh, um, wow. No comment on that. No, you know, when you do say that, you actually do have a point, what you said. You're right. I am evil. That's the only thing she has to her personality. She's evil. She wants power and she's evil. That's it. That's the problem that these three characters carried in the comics. That's the problem that these characters carry now. Usually when you have a villain, you need to have more than that. Look at Discord. Discord was a villain in season two, but there is more, much more to him. As we saw in, in seasons afterwards. Mm, true. These three, the, the only one that has a semblance of personality is Sonata. And the only reason why she has a, a, a bit of personality is because she's the clumsy one. Taco Tuesday. Yeah. Being the leader, being the leader only implies that you are the one in charge of this team. That's it. The forgettable one is the forgettable one. And Sonata is the mascot. She is the one. Her role could be performed by a puppy for all we care. Because all she has to do is look cute and be clumsy. She could be a puppy. No problem. Uh-huh. But, 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 but Oh, but, but let's be fair to Arya. She's meant to be the treacherous one. Well, I, I don't 
feel that way because to me, Arya felt like the mean one of the group because the team dynamic for all three sirens were, they were not really friendly towards each other. They, they didn't support each other in any way. Like, if you take a look see at the three villain dynamics, like, good example is Team Rocket from Pokemon. Uh, Jesse, James and Meowth, those three have been running on for how many seasons now and they work together to catch that one electric mouse, which in essence was a stupid idea to begin with. But we see them struggling and helping each other out in times of crisis. But they're struggling together. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, the thing. That's the thing is that the team, team Rocket is supposed to, they are the losers. They are kind of like the most ineffective villains ever because they fail in every episode, but they don't give up. They keep coming back. These three have no conflict. Everything is easy to them. We're going to mesmerize the entire school. We're going to put the human five and Twilight into trouble. We're going to uh, deceive. We're going to do this, this, that. The only time they fail is at the end of the movie when they get defeated. And they get defeated basically by a deus ex, deus ex machina, uh, a, a couple of those. The thing with Team Rocket is that, yes, they, they, they are failed, they are fallible. And because they are fallible, they are more likable as villains. It's the same reason why the witches in the My Little Pony movie worked so well. Because uh, they, they too were fallible, they were uh, imperfect. I wanted to draw a parallelism between those characters and these uh, the, and the sirens well, uh, because, know, because they are kind of doing something similar. I don't know. To me, the reason why Team Rocket failed was because they're incompetent. While the sirens were, well, they have a thousand years of practice and they know what they're doing. That's true. I enjoy the sirens for the menace they do represent. Uh, they. It's kind of funny that they're pulling the same shtick they pulled at the end of Equestria Girls. Mm -hmm. Oh no, the student body is being mind controlled. Do you know how easy that is? <laughs> no, but sing okay. one, sing one song about invading Equestria, and these kids will hop to with genocidal glee. But <laughs> uh, they are more. The siren song is more subtle. Mm -hmm. Say that three times fast. Basically, they influence your emotions. You're not. It's always kind of in question. Are they generating this hostility or are they just shutting down the filters? And for that, I, I point to Flash Sentry, uh, which Ben all have things to say about that. But it's not until much later in the movie that they seem to actually just go for out and out mind control with the principles. Again, not a hard challenge given that their combined IQ is three. <laughs> Honestly speaking, I don't think that they're being mind controlled. Well, technically they are, but I think they're being more influenced than anything else. Well, they, at the end where they, where the rain booms have had such an awful performance, the sirens, they just say, uh, you know, they do their little, and then the principal's like, oh, the rain booms won. How? That doesn't even make sense. Trixie's supposed to win then, by default. Actually, oh, man, well, that... when, we get, when we get to the Battle of the Bands talk, that'll be something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, anyway. we, I, I thought we, I, I, was, I was thinking, are we going to talk about that on a separate topic, or we, we tie that with talk about the villains and how they get defeated? Let's, let's keep that a separate topic, because the concept alone and some of the events that unfold Give such beautiful fodder for rage. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Deus Ex Machinas are, are all over the place. That's the siren in a nutshell. Siren in a nutshell, forget, one forgettable character, one Taco Tuesday quote, and a forehead <laughs> that will eclipse the world. Oh, wow. <laughs> a forehead that please do not direct any lights to it or else you're going to get blinded forever. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that's forever, forever. <laughs> uh, so what do we talk about next, James? Like, who, what's, on, what's next on the plate? Oh, the, the human main six, of course. Including the shorts they start in? Oh, that... Yeah, we should talk about the shorts as well, because before this movie came out, they, have, they did release a couple of shorts. Each one of them focused around one of the, one of the uh, human hmm. five. This is quite essential to the movie, because... If you haven't watched the short, you got no idea how the where the instruments came from yeah, and the ABM yeah, yeah. and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But let's talk. Let's talk about the first and best of all the shorts. The the vinyl scratch one. Oh, that one was great. Like oh, music to my ears. It, it, that was good. The music to my ears short. Yeah, that is the absolute best in my humble opinion. Maybe because it basically has no dialogue. <laughs> So there is there is no need for any of those cliches uh, to, uh, so. to receive okay. in. 
that that's one thing. But to me, what makes it work is the visual cue. Like the music happens, something interacts with the screen. Like the police guy is dancing to the beat, and when vinyl takes off the headphones to order something, everything stops. So to me, that is very entertaining. I, I blame this shirt for giving me a vinyl scratch fetish. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because this is the one that, that this, is, this is the one that people think oh, is not going to have no connection later on in the movie whatsoever. Why are they putting this other than fan service? And then it actually does have a connection in in the film. It's 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 so weird how they managed to tie I it out. That. I thought it was actually f- fairly clever the way they did it. But what did you guys think of the of this one? You you two are very quiet, Ty and, and Silver. I didn't see the short. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> You just spent again. What? I did Sh- see the short. <laughs> shun him. What? Everyone okay. shun him. Uh, at least a week. Where's my pike? Where's my pike? I'm going to put him on the pike and then I set him on fire now. I, okay, I was about to say there is not enough fire for him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but before we talk about this, how do you want to go through this? Like, do we talk about it at random or in sequence? I actually think you can sum them up pretty easily because they all follow the same format in essence. The most exceptional thing, the two most exceptional pieces, I should say, are Music to My Ears, which I agree, my favorite. The the combination of music and motion and energy, they're intertwined. It's a unified piece. It's it's like with the show, when you blend the music to the world and the characters, there you go. That's what got me more interested in the upcoming Rainbow Rocks. Where my energy started to ebb was all the other shorts where here's the basic format. One of the human five wants an instrument. So they go to get an instrument. But there's a block, blockade to getting that int- instrument. But they can have it if they prove themselves on the instrument. And son of a gun, why do they need to practice? They're instantly good. <laughs> They're perfect. Rarity never used uh, a keytar before. And, and yet she's instantly able to do it. Welcome to the magic of friendship. <laughs> that's the magic of lazy storytelling. <laughs> uh, that's the magic of Megan McCarthy. No, it was Amy Keating Rogers that did this one. Oh, mm-hmm. really? No, we're talking about uh, the Rainbow Dash no, one? Um, I, I think Rarity with the piano, that was written by Rarity. Sorry, uh, written by Amy Keating Rogers. Uh, by Rarity. Oh, Rarity <laughs> wrote it. Oh, wow. She wrote it herself. <laughs> wow. Now, Rarity, Rarity is at least an exceptional piece in that for part of it, She's by herself. Mm-hmm. The, just as in Rainbow Rocks, none of these characters has a solo moment. Everyone is in the group all together all the time. Even when it's just Fluttershy and Rarity and a Legion of Hamsters. Wow, there's a slash track for you. <laughs> it, it's still always the group. There's no individual time anymore. Meanwhile, the reason the reason Sunset stands out is she gets a lot of solo scenes or scenes where it's just her and Twilight. Mm-hmm. Or her with the dazzlings. Have we skipped talking about the Rainbow Dash short, or is it just I, me? I've outlined pretty much the conflict for every single one, because, what is it, eight total shorts? We'd be at this for a little while. Uh, no, I just wanted to mention that uh, I just wanted to mention that the moment between uh, Dash and Trixie just doing the, uh, the uh, scratch-off, I like that moment because it was like um, something out of Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Anything that reminds me of that movie is a win on my end. So I, I just wanted to mention that. That was good. Well, I agree with Silver that when you sum it up like that, yeah, it's true. And the Diamond Dogs are humans. Yeah. yeah. Spike can't get any love. <laughs> uh, but anyway. What do you want to bet if we saw a human Gilda? She'd be, well. Oh, wow, I can't wait. Like, I want to see human Gilda so much. If you were to, to throw the diamond dogs through the portal, uh, would you want to see them turn into giant dragons? Actually, that cool. sounds very awesome. Well, yeah, yeah it's just I agree. We Why yet. didn't they do that? They should, not, <laughs> they should be doing that. God damn it. But take human world Spike, chuck him through the portal, and I, I love dogs, so please be <laughs> gentle. But then when he comes out of Equestria, he's not just baby Spike, he's a full grow dragon with the mind of a puppy. Oh. Oh. He's adorable yet dangerous. destructive. <laughs> oh, wait, that's puppies in general. <laughs> and when I say that the, the We're All Friends songs are kind of, are maybe catchy but still f- feel just generic, 
Uh, Shake Your Tail and Perfect Day for Fun really convey that. You can find yourself humming that in the car, but you think, man, why am I singing yeah, those this? Those are just poppy. <laughs> They're just for funsies, nothing more to it. You, you don't think more of it. They're just like music videos. They're not even in the movie. That's it. That, that's how bad it is. Or how not consequential. Yeah. Uh, what do we talk next? Like, we talk about the shorts. Uh, now I think we... The main five? We were going to talk about the main five and uh, how they are introduced because they are not alone there with Sunset oh, Shimmer, yeah. of course. So, yeah, it's like the... They didn't really add much to them from the previous movie. They continue to be, you know... Friends. The, the ponies that we all know but in human form. They're, they're all still friends. Honestly, the only character that is somewhat interesting here and the one that has an arc going on is, is uh, Sunset Shimmer. It, and even though she's kind of been played as the redemptive, stri- the, the straightforward redemptive character, but in my own humble opinion, I think they do it without cracks. They do it without, you know, breaching or breaking, uh, breaking her out of character. Well, I do think there are arcs for the other, the human five. It's just that... Once again, they're defined by the group. Applejack and Rarity come into conflict over uh, fashion. You know, what every, basically what everyone wants the band to be. And, that's a, and, you know, bands are a collection of individuals. Everyone has their own view of how it should be. And they learn the art of compromise. True. I mean, if you take a look-see at everything, we got Rainbow Dash being the egotistical jerk of the group, saying that she's the... Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. That she, you said you you were saying that every uh, that there are conflicts in between characters. Rainbow Dash has had conflict with everything. Oh. Like she is she is a, a, an over the top jerk throughout the entire movie up until the last five minutes. This is not a movie for anyone who wants to see Dash as a likable character. She is really really yeah, bad. She is kind of well. She's that guy in every band that we have. Like, oh god, every, it's like, if you've seen Eminem's My Band, like, she's the Eminem, and everyone else is just like everyone else. Well, she wants to be the lead, she wants to be the focus of the attention, um, and yeah, yeah, so, that's obviously a part of her character as well, she wants to be, first, she wants to be known for everything, she wants to be there in the spotlight, uh, so it really played to her character, I think they played to that too much though, in the movie? Well, this is something, well, her character here is kind of a reset from the show that we know, because in the show, she was like that, but um, Mysterious Merduel kind of teach her a lesson to stop being a big fat jerk. So, that... <laughs> it different universe. Human, a human does didn't have the Mysterious Merduel. I know, Merduel. that's why I'm going to say, like, in the cartoon or in the series, we had that, and Rainbow Dash in the Pony World learned her lesson there. In this one, in the human world, she didn't learn that lesson yet. And by conflict, by the Dazzling, taught her that lesson. So it's kind of a repeat from the first one, carrying old traits back to the something new with this one. It works, so I don't mind it that much. Like you said before, we got Applejack in conflict with Rarity about fashion. Once more, well, <laughs> this goes back to the show again, so yeah. Pinkie Pie is all about having fun. Fluttershy is still a doormat because she wants, she's like, I want you to play my song. Yeah, yeah, maybe later. No, your song's Yeah, no, we'll play it another <laughs> time. Yeah, they, it's nothing special about it. And then at the end of the, at the end of the movie, they play her song and all that. So yeah, they, that's, that's her character arc is that she, she starts as a doormat. She continues, continues as a doormat. And in the end, she's a doormat, but they appreciate her for her being a doormat. <laughs> Hooray! Everybody needs to vote for that. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see for the third movie, but no, nah, no. Nah. Something tells me that Silver is going to kill us all right now because we're messing with his waifu. Um, <laughs> He's wanting <laughs> his revenge. <laughs> I know, gentlemen, I've never considered Flourish my waifu. That's deserved for ah. Princess Luna, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but not uh, Princess Luna, al- that, that, that face. Ah. The different altars are kind of like fighting against each other now. Who has the biggest altar? It's like, <laughs> but, oh, the biggest shrine. Well, I just want to say, from the, from the climax of the Battle of the Bands, which, again, we'll get to, Rarity's fashion sense in any world has just gone down the tubes. <laughs> no comment. Good God. Oh. Uh. Won't disagree with you. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, to to me in the uh, in the end battle, I think she was going for glam rock, like what Gem and the holograms are doing. 
why did she not stick with the Daft Punk? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that, that's just because Gem and the Holograms is doing it doesn't mean it's right. Have you seen the trailer for the new movie? Uh... Uh, well, just as with Gem and the Holograms, you can call the story of this plot point for plot point pretty much without seeing it. A few scenes in and you'll know what's coming and how it's, how it's going to wind up. Gem and the Holograms, I don't need to see it because I saw the trailer. Is Gem and the Holograms still done yeah, by Hasbro no, or something? Yeah, I think it's done by or Spark Studios. Uh, was it? I'm not sure. Anyway, we were talking about Principal Luna and Principal Celestia. Should we talk about those two, even though very briefly? Um, what's there to talk about? <laughs> it did <Yeah>. not pick. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no! There is one, there is one thing when I'm in their in their non brainwashed mm-hmm. state. Oh, Principal Celestia described the fall formal as exciting, <laughs> where where all the students were brainwashed and nearly abducted into another world. She called that exciting. <laughs> How do you function, you sociopath? Well, that's just a glass of optimism right there. <laughs> Silver, um, something just hit me when you said that. Looking at her personality here and back in Equestria, they have the same mindset. No, <laughs> they don't. Of, like, remember the Grand Galloping Gala where everything turned to chaos? Not once, but twice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Grand Galloping Gala, completely different situation. You have a lot of assets at your, dis- at your disposal. And for Equestria, that is common day occurrence. That's what happens when Twilight has a bad day. <laughs> People getting brainwashed, different dimensions, etc. And Discord going nuts. Yeah, okay. That's normal. We're talking about the human world here. They saw a demon being summoned in front of the uh, school grounds. They, they, they didn't even call the police. They should have Mulder and Scully and the entire paranormal research division of the FBI up their butts doing investigation about what the hell but happened James. and where is this portal and why aren't we exploiting it right now? God damn it. <laughs> it's... No, Norman, shut up. Well, it's not Earth. You're wrong. <laughs> no, I'm not wrong. It's... I don't know what I'm saying. No, it's... You Celestia. are wrong. <laughs> well, if I could interject, Celestia the Pony does enjoy the unexpected. But there's a lot more lighthearted unexpected with her. Animals going crazy, the gala gets ruined with flying cakes and the like. That's kind of funny. No one's drowning under the smooths, <laughs> unless you're Apple Boy. Uh, but it gets more, it gets more serious when Discord's about to throw someone in another dimension. But oh, hey, here's Fluttershy. There's some defenders. Celestia recognizes, I've got to keep everyone safe, but in afterwards, oh, phew. Well, that sparked, spiced things up. Principal Celestia. Well, wasn't that fun? We all nearly <laughs> died. <laughs> no, I, I, I kind of see your point here, but I'm still in the mindset of Principal Celestia leads a boring life. She needs excitement and she gets it wherever she can. But Ty, what about you, man? What do you think? Um, well, as far as the two principles go, what, my one question is, why do you need two principles? I mean, I come from a small school, God knows, so maybe this is something that bigger schools have, but when do you honestly need two principles? And they seem to share the same office, too. I don't think so. Because they walk around everywhere, they... they're like, join the hip. <laughs> I always oh, wow. had a vice principal in my high schools. Yeah. There, there was always, there were always the, the principal oh. and the vice principal or the, or the, uh, the, the, the second in command from the, the headmaster. We always had that. Oh, yeah, but the vice principal never did anything. That's well, the thing. They just sat the back and drank. Not, when the principal is there, is not there, the vice principal has to take hmm. control of that. And when not, the, 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 the head of the, the head of the teacher, of the, of the teachers. Actually, Ty, it's funny, it's funny you say that because judging from the shorts, the scenes from the movies, and even some stuff leading up to friendship games, Principal Luna is the one doing all the work around you. You know, you talk about that. And honestly, uh, in where I'm from, the principal doesn't do much. Uh, the principal kind of, I don't know what he does behind the scenes, but from my point of view is that the principal always relaxes while the vice principal frets about every little detail that's going on in school. So that's how I look at it. And to me, what's going on in the shorts for... Friendship game is normal to me. Really? Do people dress up an owl and peacock? Okay, and I'm just saying about Principal alarm? Luna. <laughs> I am learning so much about you today, Norman. I'm just Norman. talking about Vice Principal Luna. We don't talk about it. I don't know. 
Shut your old mouth. I'm just talking about Princess Luna. <laughs> and we can pick it. <laughs> oh, well. But other than that, um, I, I think we, we've, we've been avoiding this one for a bit because of, um, what are we going to talk about the last century no, now? The best for that is like, uh, out of the main six, you know, the she demon who almost destroyed the school, well, she destroyed the school, but almost take over the school student body, turning them into mindless zombies. Oh, I thought we were talking, I thought we talked about well, Sunset well, Shimmer I didn't, I didn't think, I didn't think Derpy was all that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about Sunset Shimmer. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's what Derpy wants you to think. <laughs> I really thought we talk about sunset already. Really? But okay. I don't think so. We we kind of, yeah. Not really. I know. Yeah. We kind of gloss over her. Yeah, though. We, we didn't really. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's talk. Let's let's talk about. Well, poor girl. You call her the elephant in the room. She's not that fat. <laughs> no. She is. Oh okay. wow. I I'm glad that they went with the route they're going with because. I've seen a lot of animes, and when a character that was mean evil trying to redeem itself, he always have that, I'm brooding and evil, but I want to be good. Uh, I'm glad that they didn't go for that. <laughs> to me, this is... Uh, I, I can... I feel... Uh, I want to give her a hug. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, she's... She's oh, being very... Be- <laughs> she's being very believable in her emotions. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it's funny. Sunset Shimmer in the first movie was a non-entity mm. for me. She was. You complain about the Dazzlings not being all that great. Good God, Sunset was every Mean Girl cliche filled with contradictory plans. It's like, what? This is our villainous. Oh, good Lord, a stick would be doing better. At least a stick, a stick would have hit Twilight by now. Question goes three, and, 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 and a stick will have more meat on the on, on its bones. Yeah, <laughs> and that stick will just say, "I am grouped." <laughs> it will shout it to the heavens <laughs> themselves, <laughs> and it will dance at the sound of music. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's something that Sansa and the stick have in common. Oh well, it's something that Sansa and the stick have in common. Uh, but we see here that Sunset is trying her best to well. Be nice with everyone. She's trying to prove that she's she's turned a new leaf and trying to be good. But her actions or the way she do it is a bit rough. Like she doesn't really know how to. Especially when that scene with Sweetie Belle. Like she wants to help but the way she grabs the paintbrush was kind of, Aha! Mine! How can I help you today? We don't want it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, we're sorry, but we don't trust you to turn into a demon again. Uh, yeah, no, we're not gonna talk with you. Uh, Albeit, come on, it's kind of justified that they don't trust her. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, it's I, like, I, I totally agree. Don't turn, don't, 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 don't turn your back on her or else it will suck your blood out of your neck. No, I, I totally agree with that mindset because it's, like I said, this, this whole situation here has probably been a week from when the incident happened. So probably yeah. people oh, are... Oh, and if, if it's been... If it's been a week, uh, first off, wow, season four really went by on a on a flash. <laughs> and uh, second, how fast can Sunset Shimmer rebuild the, the school? Like, wow, she's good. Look at that. There was a broken street lamp in front of my house when I lived in Madrid, and it took them two years to fix it. <laughs> I don't under I don't believe Sunset Shimmer fixing the entire school with the help of Snips and Snails in a week. I don't think she no. did the whole thing. It was a punishment to clean everything up. Uh, no, they no, got contractors for it. No, she, don't you see? She's found her inner passion, masonry. <laughs> <laughs> Still going with that one, eh? New cutie I... mark appears. It's a cinder block. <laughs> yeah. I think it could work. Yeah. But I think we covered the main five. On to the backgrounds or side characters? Well, we kind of forgot about Twilight. Well, um, Twilight is sequential for now. Or do you want to go with her now? Well, here's the thing. Well, there is a scene with Sunset that ties into what you talked about, Norman. Mm-hmm. Uh, where she says, oh, I'm going to go greet the new girls. I figure give them a chance to get to know the new me before they hear about the old. Ah, uh, yes. That's proactive. That's... I'm taking charge of my own life and how I'm presented to my peers. That is like, you go, Sunset. That is awesome. That is 
Well done. That's good characterization. Oh, look, it's the Dazzlings. God, that smile <laughs> on Adagio. I was like, oh, it's supposed to be oh no, but I can think of God, that forehead, that eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> Just some bad timing. And, oh, no, you killed it for me. Adagio. It's- Adagio. Become a Darth Vader character. It's your only hope. If we- <laughs> If it wasn't because of the hair, the hair is the one that frames the forehead. That's that's Boy. the problem. Darth forehead. <laughs> if she didn't, ha- if she didn't have that much forehead and she didn't have that much hair, it would be it would be better. Couldn't fit it in the helmet. All right, but but fast forwarding, with <laughs> Twilight comes back and everyone's all cheering for her, and poor Sunset is you know the odd the odd one out now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Literally the odd one. Oh, She's yeah. the seventh member. There's that great scene during the sleepover. And normally this is where I get kinky, but <laughs> it's, where Twi- <laughs> it's where Twilight's trying to write out this counterspell. And Sunset, they're, they're just talking in the, in the kitchen. And for a moment there, they connect on this concept of responsibility. Twilight is this new princess. Spike has touted the fact that she has a title and a castle. Ooh, wow. But only they can say, you know what? we're under a lot of pressure to impress everyone and everyone looks to us expecting us to know what to do. And for a moment there, you think, is this what drove sunset uh, to become arrogant and uh, combative? Was did the pressure breaker uh, into being that way? Just as twilight is putting the pressure on herself to fix this without asking for help and see how far that gets her. And I think that that is the best scene in the movie. That is pure character right there. I absolutely agree. It's mm-hmm. weird that a, that a movie that uh, had the music and the musical numbers and the action kind of like up front when it came to promoting it, the strongest scene in the entire movie is just a dialogue between two characters in a kitchen, which it kind of talks about the, the nature of the show. Uh, because sometimes the, the, the small, tiny episodes that focus on one or two characters are more engaging than the super action uh, super adventurous ones. Which, I know, it's, it's, it does carry on that, uh, uh, the, 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 the soul of the TV show onto that one scene. And I absolutely agree with you there, Silvery, that this is a pure character, character scene. Hmm. Well, I, I do feel the pressure for Twilight here where everyone's depending on her to save the world, where she is entrusted to solve the problem, where, okay, I'm the, on- I'm the only hope for this world to save it from the evil sirens. Now I must write the counter spell. I pay one color less than two blue to play Dissolve. Oh, it's not working. So the scene here in the kitchen where Sunset is the only one that kind of relates to her, yeah, I mean, th- this is an awesome scene. Especially there's a lot of whipped cream. Mm. Well then. Again, oh, we're God learning, God. we're learning so many things about you, Nora. <laughs> no, so you're not. Yes, yes you, are. you like to dress up in an owl costume with lots of whipped cream on hand. <laughs> no, oh, right. yeah. And, it's suggestive. And, and right when the two characters are having such a good moment, uh, fan service appears. I mean, mod pie appears. Uh, for no other reason than to uh, appease what the fans want to see. I don't because know. what's the point of? I uh, no, I just cannot think of any other reason to put Mod Pie on that scene other than the fans like Mod. She was no, super I, popular. The I, chart said so. You have to funny. put her in the movie at one point. <laughs> I, I think to me, uh, this goes back to. I, it, it felt kind of forced for me. I, well, kind of, but to me, this goes back to the the fact where this is super serious. Now, insert something funny kind of situation. And yeah, it's funny, but uh, I, I think Mod here I, spoils I the, the whip, mood. The whipped cream, the whipped cream gag is funny enough on its own. Yeah, the whipped cream gag is just the initial start, but the conversation that Twilight has with Sunset, that's the most heartfelt moment. But it's a cartoon show for kids, so they had to kind of break it up with ah, more comedy. That's a mood point. Oh, come on, Norman. That's a mood point. There are many <laughs> cartoons for little kids nowadays that have a good balance between comedy and drama. Yeah, when they do it right, they do it right. When they do it wrong, they do it wrong. Yeah. I think 
I, I think this scene didn't need more pie. Yeah, I mean, it's the the reason why she's there is it's the pink it's Pinkie Pie's house, and logically her sister is there. So I don't see why won't she be there. But the fact that it happens here at that moment was, I agree, it was not needed. Personally, I just enjoyed it, but that's kind of a theme of this whole movie. There's all actually. How little faith must they have in the background humans that now suddenly they're bringing in ponified characters, humified pony characters to do all the funny stuff like the Battle of the Bands? Hmm. I, I, it's the same rhetoric I, I see in the Slice of Life. A cameo can make it fun, but it can't make it good. Hmm. Yeah, I guess, I guess. So with that, how did Twilight came here in the first place? Like... Isn't the portal still closed? Are we going to talk about that now? <laughs> well, Sorry, I, I have so many thoughts. <laughs> so many delicious uh, thoughts wandering around. My mind is simply ablaze with particles <laughs> of, of consciousness. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, James, what do we want to talk about? Like, What should we go for? Well, let's talk about how suddenly books vibrate in Equestria, which might explain why Twilight has so many... I, 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 it's a um, nature, really. <laughs> funny enough, the book wasn't actually vibrating. The one that went vibrating was uh, the the one underneath it was Fifty Shades of Hay. Oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, it's not doing there. But I can totally, I can totally imagine uh, Tara Strong having to read the line. Oh yes, conjugate the verb. <laughs> <laughs> That's not an adjective, but I don't care. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, but anyway, with the book here... No, yeah, the book that apparently connects the human world with the with the, the pony world. Sunset managed to keep that from her days of writing to Princess Celestia. Mm-hmm. And ain't that a convenient, a, a convenient setup, if anything? It's like, oh, you kept that book from days past. I thought that you moved on from the Sunset. Well, she did mm-hmm. even mention that she don't even know why she kept it, except that Deep down inside her, she might be doing the wrong thing. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes things like that does happen. And plot convenience, probably. Yay. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it, plot I'm, convenience. Not, I'm saying oh, yeah. maximum plot convenience. Yeah. I don't know why I'm doing this. I just hear the voice of a person called Megan telling me to do these things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, the, the book is interesting. Uh, and... We also get the setup for the villains and who they are, the sirens. We've been mentioning them, but I think in the Pony World is the first time that we get the whole story about them. They're dangerous creatures, they play music to create conflict with each other and suck their negative energy. And a great wizard called Gandalf, I mean, Star Swirl the Bearded, saved them or defeated the siren. No, no, by... no, no. no. We, we, we got... Yes? I'm sorry, we got to change that name. Okay. He is Star Swirl the jerk face now. <laughs> How? Star Swirl yes. the jerk face. Be- because, well, even if you do- haven't read the Sirens, Fiendship is Magic. No, I'm going to on him. This dude dumped three dangerous creatures in another dimension willy nilly. <laughs> it's not Just my like dimension. <laughs> it's not my dimension. I don't care. Oh, what? You're, you're, a, you're a technological based society. You have no defense against their song. Well, Sucks to be you. <laughs> wow. Like, that is why he is Star Swirl, the jerk face. Hmm, okay, but... And that's how you kill any ability of a character that we didn't even see in 10 seconds. Wow. But... I mean, that's that's how quickly you can destroy a character. I... <laughs> yeah. Like, the the, the, the Sirens comic destroyed any any uh, uh, appeal that Star Swirl had. And this was a, This was the very beginning of it. This is the, this was the fallout. Yeah, but honestly speaking, right, like, the whole situation here in the movie was Starswell the jerk face here. We don't 100% know, but it's kind of, okay, he knew that sending them off to the alternate universe will stop them because that world doesn't have magic. So, yay. But what got me and what got me thinking or what at least piqued my interest was when they sent or when he sent them to the EQG world, it was in modern times. Like, what? That That's the only part of the comic that... Didn't make sense. Didn't make sense, Brooke. Well, the whole thing, like, it 
brought up a lot of questions. Ty, have you thoughts on this? Um, no, I don't. What? <laughs> How? Uh, have you well, not read the comic? No, I haven't read the comic. Uh, oh, so, shut him some more. I, I, I'm already on like two weeks shun after, after this call. <laughs> Goodness. Ta- Ty, 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 what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> you have a multinational shorts, you have a busy comics, you have... Oh, oh well, he, he does have a cute slack. He does have a cute fluffy butt, so I'll Look give him eyes. that. <laughs> yeah. Look into my eyes. <laughs> Look into my eyes. He uh, hunts the pony maker users wherever they may be. <laughs> they will uh, go down. But Silver, what do you think? <laughs> I I think here's the this is headcanon. Mm-hmm. Full admittance, I am I'm making this headcanon. The only explanation I can give, however, as to why Sunset wound up there, why the the sirens wound up there. That's not just a portal to another dimension. It's a, it goes to a fixed point in time. Maybe maybe a little bit uh, different in terms of you know a few an hour or two has passed between events. But Equestria Girls universe just runs on a different time scale, and that portal tends to dump everyone within that time frame. Ooh, no, that makes a lot of sense. Hmm. It's not just space, but time. That makes sense because yeah. So use a lot of convenience. Mm. Don't true that well, too. <laughs> well, if we're talking about plot convenience, the entire movie is plot convenience yeah. because by your toys. Yeah. No, but I have to agree with Silver here because uh, in the time that this event happened, which was sorry, the first event happened, like the first Equestria Girls, where Sunset Shima stole the crown, and to when Sunset Shima is asking for toilets for help, you you can see that it's, well, in my head, it's probably just a few weeks after the fall formal, or I could be wrong, I don't know, but to me, the time frame was not that long. It could be about a month, or could be about a week from when the Disney... The movie says it's a week. Really, no? Doesn't it? I don't know. I think the movie says it's a week, from what I remember. I don't know if they mentioned specifically, but... um... I, I think so too, but to I me, mean, everybody had better feelings still. <laughs> yeah, true that, true that. So with that, like if people still have bitter feelings, that means it's recent. So probably a week or a month after the event. And Celestia is already bored. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I need my adrenaline rush. <laughs> oh my. What is? Dan said, I'm going to throw her into another demon rage again. <laughs> oh, wow. But uh, with that, we covered most of them. We covered the books. We covered Celestia and Luna. And, well, By the way, that portal that Twilight builds, that now... Uh, Arcane I magic. <laughs> I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I'm sorry. Me either. Hey, I don't know how that I I don't know how that works. How did she know like, to make it? Like I'm that. gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna read this book written by Nikola Nikola Tesla. Okay, good. <laughs> hey, let's, hey, hey. let's be like steampunk uh, magic power portal in a couple of seconds. Hey James, and I'm gonna put a book in it. James, James, James. Ah, what? Don't you know anything about science? That's not science, Norman. <laughs> uh, Norman, Norman. Speak quietly now. Uh, a few people out there will get this joke. A few people out there will get this joke. So we are neglecting the local genius of Ponyville. And she's irrefutably a genius now. Because I, Albert Einstein said so. How? Who? Albert what? Einstein said that the Mark... Huh? Albert, Albert Einstein. Might have heard of him. Had a little know. something to do with nuclear fission. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he basically said the mark of genius is to take the complex and make it simple. So who said... She's going to take the magic in here and put it in there so she can get over there, there to here, here to there, there to here, there, here, there, here, there. Pinkie Pie, for all people's protestations, is a genius. According to Albert Einstein's uh, <laughs> definition. According to Albert Einstein. <laughs> are you going to mess with that man's hair? I don't think so. Oh, so wow. you're saying, you're, you're, you're saying, you're saying that the pony that defies physics is the equivalent of the human that revolutionized physics? I'm okay. saying that, well, she I'm, saying they, I'm saying they'd be drinking buddies. <laughs> wow. 
Oh God! Oh, well, they kind imagine. of have the they, they are halfway they are halfway there. They're mad geniuses with very weird hair. So yeah, the only thing that is missing is tw- is Pinky needs a mustache now. Well, she does have a mustache in one scene. Fake one. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Oh boy. There is one thing though that I wanted to talk about before we move on to talk about the climax of the of the movie and how it ends and all that is the the tone the movie has. You know the the kind of like the if it's drama, if it's comedy, if it's whatever. And I don't know about you guys, but was I the only one thinking that this movie, in many scenes, in many moments, is unnecessarily mean? Mean? How do you? What, what do you mean by that? In that sometimes the characters are put through the meat grinder, or they are made to be, they, they are made to suffer, just because, the, just because they are meant to in that scene, and no, for no other reason. Yeah, I do not. I did notice that like, too. I did notice that too. That embarrassing moment at the gym, and then, uh, yeah. But you can like when the, when the, the, the first musical uh, yeah. musical number and uh, Snips and Snails are trying to ruin uh, Rarity's yeah. outfit, and uh, at the end of the competition or whatever, when they chosen to be the, the ones going against uh, the the, the Dazzlings and. Everyone is booing them and all that. It's like, wh- why do you have the need to make the character suffer when the not the story nor the movie actually calls for it? I don't know how to describe it because to me, when I look at it, it was kind of mean, but the story kind of went that way in terms of, okay, now uh, Rainbow Dash is getting too cocky and is showing her rainbow or as they quote unquote call it pony up and she got speared by Sunset so yay and everyone thinks Sunset is the mean girl now like she she never changed she's just the mean girl that everybody loves to hate so yay especially Flash yeah <laughs> uh, we, we don't talk about Flash yet we don't talk about Flash yet well maybe we should <laughs> well uh, before we carry on with that like anyone else has the thought with this no no, like, n- no mean spirited Feelings for the what you might call this um, scenes or whatnot? No, I think you got it. No, isn't isn't anybody isn't anybody else weirded out by the by the uh, how at, at times the movie feels like uh, and other times it's like it's like there is a disparity of tone going on here that is kind of weird to me. I don't know. It's like. Am I supposed to feel sad about this part or am I supposed to be happy about this part? It's like I don't get this. That is a decision you must make for yourself. <laughs> so true. Oh, well, I guess uh, it doesn't really matter because it's in the script. <laughs> uh, so what we're supposed to talk about next? That one guy? We should talk about, we should talk about that one guy. We should talk about Brad. Uh, you mean Vincent Tong? Awesome guy. I talked to him once. He's pretty cool. I have nothing against Vincent Tong, so no, I am just a character he voices. And even then, even then, I don't hate Flash. Yeah. I just like to torment him. Yeah. Why would he? There's a difference. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I need to put he, a... he, he is, Silver, he is your show's bad monkey now. I need to put a statement here. For me personally, I do not think ill of Flash Sentry. I kind of like the character. I like to see where he goes from here on out. And I do want to see him more in the show. But as a joke, as a funny scenario that we all four or three here of us can make where, hey, that's Flash. Let's torment him. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking I, of. I like, Pony Fl- I like Pony Flash. I think Human Flash is... Really, really, really boring. Oh, he was like, adorable. Come he's on. like a, he's, he's, uh, he's like a wet piece of paper. There hey. is nothing else to him other than, he's, no really, human flesh does, uh, no, has nothing he's to him. Cool. He's like a wet piece of paper. In all fairness, no, he's he was not. not shown much in the movie. Yeah. He he's no, in- he's not interesting, he's not engaging, I know, I'm not feeling it here, Flash. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like Pony Flash more, but that's because, you know, he, he, at least he's, uh, he's a Pegasus. He can fly. Look, he's he came to the, the studio. Now he's crying over there in the corner. Look what you've done. Oh, okay. look what you've I don't done. care. No, no, no. We, we, we've seen how Flash uh, reacts to adversity. So, as Ty said, 
He's so adorable in this movie. Look, he's trying to be a tough guy. Uh-oh. Look at him looking all angry and pouty and as he <laughs> plays the guitar and then when he loses to the Dazzle, he just skulks off. <laughs> I didn't want to win anyway. He, uh, he has no third movie presence. they bring third movie they bring Shia LaBeouf to play the role of oh. last century. No, uh. no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, and yet, Flash does raise a question about the Dazzlings. It's that question of, again of well, how to describe this. First, we ask the question: Do the Dazzlings instill this hostility, or do they just bring it to the surface? Mm-hmm. If it's the latter, then we get our first real bit of characterization for Flash because he's hyper competitive about this. He wants to win. He's very driven by the thought of victory. Hmm. Now did you mention it? That's his adrenaline rush. Yeah, and... but it's interesting. It's interesting, but you're kind of like uh, throwing an interpretation of it. It's not really made clear until the short for uh, Friendship Games, which, lo and behold, features Flash Sentry. Mm-hmm. I trust we're all. Oh, the is it the Banner Day one? Yeah, the Banner yeah. Day. The dude's got an ego, <laughs> a pretty sizable one. It's actually growing with each each uh, movie. Our rage is only making him stronger. <laughs> He's feeding off the energy. <laughs> oh, he could be a so, siren then. He is a siren. So it's very... No, 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 no. It's a merman. Merman. <laughs> oh, well. so, but, but there's, the, there's the ultimate question. Uh, is Did this movie give us some actual characterization for Flash? Well, that's, that's an interesting one. Like, we... When we first seen the scene where the sirens were singing their spell, we we got no idea what it did. Some say that it kind of brought out the competitive nature or brought brought out something from the students. Some say they were being brainwashed. So, mm. you know, I'm kind of worried about that. What you just said about probably this movie giving us something about uh, some characterization for Flash. Mm-hmm. I don't think it did. Uh-huh. I, you know, is that, I, I, yeah, I think, uh, I think people are so worried and or obsessed with Flash Sentry because we want to like him by proxy. No. Is that we like Twilight, we like Twilight Sparkle, we like Twilight because she is the character that we've been following from the very beginning and we want to like the character that they are trying to, you know, Ship, indirectly yeah. ship mm-hmm. with uh, with uh, with her. We want to like Flash Sentry because we like Twilight Sparkle. Mm-hmm. So at, at any point, we're trying to like you know find a reason or figure out a way to for us to find this guy likable. Or on the other side of the spectrum, we we are trying to find a way to find this guy hateable. There is no middle point with with uh, uh, Flash. With some people, is that you either hate him a lot or you love him a lot. Yeah, but I, I think with what Silver said about the... Well, I, I think what Silver said about Flash's characteristic here is that, well, he's very competitive. And did the siren brought it out of him? Or was it just there dormant? Or was it something else totally? But with the recent short, it shows him very competitive. So, could be the latter with what Silver said. So, it's food for thought. It's food for thought. Hmm. Food. <laughs> food, thought food. <laughs> Wait, it's not tangible. Dang it. No. <laughs> I'm hungry now. Oh, same here. <laughs> but I don't really, I don't want to hate Flash Century. I don't, I can't say I'm eager to sing his praises. I just like, give me something. This bland, hey, I'm a nice guy, but I don't really do anything. <laughs> That's boring. Yeah. Give me something to work with here, people. I'll form an opinion after you make, give me an actual character. Mm, true that, true that. For, for good or ill. And as for Pony Flash, he's not done squats. He <laughs> he had he had his chance in party pooped and he blew it. Oh, <laughs> uh, that. He introduced he introduced uh, someone and then was uh, one of Cadence's escorts and that's it. Yeah. He could have es- he could have escorted Pinkie Pie into the unknown wasteland. <laughs> He could have kept the weird polar bear thing at bay while Pinky advanced. Wouldn't even have to say a line, but oh no, oh no. It's kind of something that they decide, 
Cadence is, uh, they decide Cadence is more interesting and likable than Flash, even though we know next to nothing about Cadence. Like, me, Miss Princess Market Employee is more interesting to put in this scene than oh, yeah. this other character. Maybe they know that if they put Flash into you on anything, people are going to rage. <laughs> so they're trying to avoid putting him on anything. Probably. <laughs> but you know what? Like, um, we, we need to go to the next scenario or the next piece of it conversation. Is... The next thing, yeah, yeah. It, it is. It is very easy to get wrapped into talking about Flash Sentry and never stop yeah. because he's just that. It's funny. He's boring, bland, and really droll on on uh, on the movies. But when it comes to talk about him, you can talk about that guy for ages. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> Why we, we do? We need to set aside an episode for that. We need to set aside an episode for that. But what's next on the list is the songs or the audition. Or what was it? Uh, the, the battle, battle of the bands. Yeah, battle of the band round one. So we got six yeah, like still. well, we're not just going to talk about. Oh, we, hang, we can talk on, about all the musical numbers on that, right? Actually, I'd like to hear Ty's first thoughts on this. Oh yeah, on the steps and sales. Yo, on, on any of it, on any of. Well, them. no, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the steps and sales part because <laughs> it it angered me. I don't get angry often, but I was seeing red. I woke up three days later um, after the coma. <laughs> In the hospital, wondering what happened. Uh, oh God! They butchered that rap. Tie? They butchered it. It was horrible. They. I, I like rap. I listen to it all the time. It, it's my favorite genre. So to see that they were including it in the movie, I'm like, oh goody! They're actually they're actually going to do that. That's awesome. And then that happened. That scene happened. And I mean, they, when they dropped the mics and they were told to not drop the mics, that was funny. But that was it. I, I just I was furious. I didn't like it. They, they butchered it. It was horrible. Well, uh, to me, yeah, okay, I do agree with you that the rap was horrible, but it was built that way. It was built horrible oh, yeah. because it's snips and snails. They're kind of the um, dummy. They're the goofballs. Yeah, they're, they're the goofballs. The yeah, they're the goofballs. Um, and I mean, don't get me wrong, it was it was a funny scene, but I, I just, like, deep down, I really wish they... Put, like made a really good effort towards it to making like a good rap song, but I mean, what can you expect? I was you know, I, I think the effort was was focused on making it look bad. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to dream. The effort was there, <laughs> making it bad. Yeah, and then let's just um, go through every every moment here a- ASAP because if we kind of linger on, it's going to be two hours or three hours. What linger? No, we're going to talk. Oh, we're talking about this, Norman. Don't, don't, don't. Good <laughs> do us. Yes, yes, let no. us talk about these things. Come on. Uh, yeah. All right. Shut up. Let's let's talk about this. <laughs> not rush it. Not make it long. Just make it as long as it should be. All right. Well, once again, oh, okay. the, the fact of the matter is, they had no faith in the background humans to be even a little interesting. So they brought the pony characters and made them human. Mm. So you've got Lyra and Sweetie Drops. Sing a duet, the first of what is kind of snowballed mm-hmm. uh, in terms of their presentation. Then you have you have bulk biceps once again showing that strong men also play violin. Oh yeah, he does work at and, a mas- what's that called the spa? Yeah, so yeah. And then above all else, you have the musical genius that is Derpy. Oh, <laughs> Trixie because never stops. So, because- Never, I've never seen an instrument like that. I have to say, it's been here and there, but it's, it is not conventional. It's just really, what's the word I'm looking for? Strange. It's one of those quirky instruments. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, the CMCs are on stage also. They send Octavia flying away. <laughs> they, they send Octavia flying away. <laughs> Is that safe? <laughs> Just gonna point that out. Is that a safe thing to do? Is this what happens at Battle of the Bands? I don't know. This is cutthroat. This is worse than the. The X Factor American Idol and Britain's Got Talent combined. <laughs> wow! Wow. Where, where's Simon Campbell when you need him? <laughs> oh, wow. So, let's see. Who do we have next? Like, okay, we covered uh, Lyra Bonbon, CMCs. Well, we still have Flash. Yay. Actually, we never hear Flash play. Yeah, that, that was one thing that really came up. They don't actually ever play the songs, or at least we're not shown it, um, which was kind of unfortunate. Mm. At least in my opinion. Oh, like well. 
Oh well, <laughs> I, I, I'm guessing he's another rock. Yeah. He, he's a probably a good guitar player, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go with that. He's a good guitar player, but we don't hear him because he's too awesome. Perhaps. Yes. Sure. Keep telling yourself that, amigo. <laughs> yes. So next song and the last one for the finals is Rainbooms with their awesome as I wanna be. Yeah, I mentioned earlier where Rainbow yeah. Dash is going yeah. go pony up and got speared by Sunset. So yeah. Uh, you say speared by Sunset, kind of like Dash humility. What's that? That's not in my dictionary. It's not there. <sighs> <laughs> and well. Obviously, the winners for this are going to be... Well, going to the finals are going to be Trixie and her band and the Dazzlings. But somehow, the Dazzlings bribe the principals into saying that the Rainbooms won. Yay. Mind control. <laughs> Yay, so they won. Everybody's booing at them. And Trixie's <laughs> have a plot for revenge. Vengeance! What now? Like... We, I think we set up the f- for the finals, right? You have to ask about yeah. Trixie's let's talk about the final battle. Wait, Trixie, Trixie's, Trixie's co-band members. Mm-hmm. Why did they do this? Because they were influenced by the magic of the sirens. Well, no, 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 they were they were blindly following Trixie. I don't think that was part of the sirens. I yeah. think they were in it before that. Oh yeah. Why, why would why would you want to be in a band whose the lead is Rainbow Dash times ten? <laughs> I think it's times twelve actually, but I haven't checked the math. Actually, have we seen have we seen those characters in the regular show before? No, I don't think so. I, the color I, schemes I, are not that I know of. I'm sorry, I don't watch regular show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But Mordecai is so much fun. Uh <laughs> that movie didn't sound any bit of fun. <laughs> oh, well. mm. But yeah. So no, I haven't watched that actually. So I we're should. going to the finals then, right? Oh well. But yeah, let's let's talk about the let's, let's talk about the final battle. Yeah, the the the, the final music number. And oh, the, the, here's where the, the Deus Ex Machina appear. Oh, well, actually, what I love before we talk about the Deus Ex or the metal corn, as I like to call it, mm-hmm. uh, we should definitely talk about the Deus Ex Machina. Well, but, but just before that, just before that, they have the the, the classic trope of oh, you're you're locked in a room together. Oh yes. Uh, I, now. Now, uh, James, I know you don't want to rewatch, but ha- does anyone else notice that <laughs> Twilight, when they're trying to open the door, it's a pull, not a push door? <laughs> yeah. That's why they couldn't get out. Yeah. I, don't think I knew it. Even, I don't think Trixie even locked the door. They're that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I get... <laughs> Gosh. No, go on, go on. Continue. Here's the thing. Twilight comes to the revelation that it doesn't matter what song they play as long as they're friends. So that invalidates her entire struggle. And I, and I really dislike that. I was like, at this point, you can do two things. You can make the song on the... It, just whip it up in a few seconds with Fluttershy's help. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or you can, you can knock everything Twilight's been struggling towards out the window and say it was entirely pointless. <laughs> both are pretty... Both are kind of a blow in terms of storytelling, but I'd rather you make a song. But then... Not only do they invalidate Twilight Struggle, but thanks to Vinyl's toyetic car, they invalidate that the, that the Rainbooms even had to be in the battle. They didn't have to participate in the Battle of the Bands. They just had to usurp the final show. That's how it's always yeah. been from the very yeah, beginning. Because... Like when No, no, no. It's not been from the very no, no, beginning. It, it, no, it, it was. It, it, it kind of was. It's not. because by... no, no, it, no, it wasn't because... If uh, because vinyl's just been there in the background doing nothing, we've yeah, been following Jinx. these guys, yeah. and then they get their asses kicked out of the final battle. Yeah, Jinx, they are I crashing s- onto the show. They are not competing. Yeah, when I say from the very beginning, I meant from the very beginning when they were having the greet and meet, where every band member was just having punch. They tried to take the sirens out from that point, but failed because the power of friendship did not work the same way it did with Sunset Shimmer. So they had to go through the whole song and dance. That's the thing. Vinyl's contribution shows they didn't have to go through this song and dance. <laughs> they, they could have been, they could have spent the whole time out of sight, away from the battle, waited until concert night, and then done their song. And he was like, really? <laughs> really? 
and this this thing basically proves that Twilight didn't need to travel through a, to, from Equestria to the human world because she's not needed in the end. You're absolutely correct. They, she didn't have to do anything but but saying maybe you should. Uh, she she dared to say you guys stop that. You should be friends. Stop arguing. They're like okay, let's do this. That's it. What? <laughs> I the, she's completely unnecessary when it comes to that uh, to to the conflict. They couldn't pass the entire movie without her. Well, like the wiki says, there is ex machina. So, <laughs> yeah, there's. Yeah. Well, it, it it is several ones, and one of them that turns from a car into a into a amplifier. It, it, that's uh, jazz, yo. That's table. jazz from Transformers. <laughs> uh, shut up! Thoughts. That's not jazz. Uh, stop Die, spoiling my dreams. <laughs> Hi. Help, help us Die, are you still with us? I'm still with you guys. You're getting catty though. <laughs> We're getting catty. That's why. Help, help us crush Nor- Norman's dreams. Well, here, here's the thing that I, I think about at least with uh, Twilight being there. Um, at the start, they, they had the problems with the sirens coming and they didn't know what to do about it. That's why they needed to get Twilight in. Because they, otherwise they wouldn't have had a clue what to do and, it, and they wouldn't have been able to do it. And then Twilight comes and she doesn't really know what to do either. Um, they try to do what they did last time, doesn't work. So they needed to do something new. And obviously Twilight was working hard to figure that out. I think she should have learned the lesson that, uh, or she should have already known the lesson that if she's working by herself, it's not going to work. I think, you know, the whole show is, is based around this whole friendship concept. Crazy, right? And she should have asked for help. She should have asked for her friends. I don't know why she didn't know to do that or try to do that even. Well, I think the reason why is because everyone was dependent on her. Like, she's the only expert in the situation. But why didn't she just say something like, oh, I know, I, I'm having help. I need your help, guys. Like, I'm not getting this. This is going horribly. You know, this isn't going to work. We've got to look for something else. I don't know why she didn't uh, try that. Yeah, I do agree with that, but I don't know. To me, the way I'm looking at it or the situation that's playing on screen was everybody was so dependent on Twilight that it's putting pressure on her to get it right. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's definitely that. But, I mean, I feel like she should have learned this. She should have had this lesson down pat by now. Yeah, true that, true that. Either way, it's, at least they figured it out in the end. Uh, true. <laughs> Bringing us back. Yeah, but the way that they figured it out is... Yeah, but still, we get to see the Dazzlings pony up and have their stands come out, so that's cool. Yeah, to which the main five, uh, to which the main five respond by turning into the new version of the Questa Girls toys, which they are doing the same thing they did in the other movie. Uh, this is the form that they are marketing, and once again, they only show it in the last five minutes. <laughs> uh, I guess don't fix what I'm broke, except when it's broke from the very beginning, and then you have to fix it. If you don't fix it, then you're just being lazy. Uh, I guess. I guess. The one thing that's cool, though, is when they manage to summon that, uh, I, I think they called it the Avatar of Friendship or whatever, that giant horse made out of light mm-hmm. thing that fights the spirits of the cha- of the of the Dazzlings. That was cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, very visually. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about you, but that was that was pretty cool visually, vis- visual speaking. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it doesn't make a lot of sense, but it looks pretty cool. It's more of a visual representation mm-hmm. than anything. I do like Sunset's transformation here and the quote unquote dilemma that she had, like join the dazzling or join the rain booms. Ooh, which will she choose? Ooh. Uh Tension not going oh, anywhere. Did she ever really want to join the Dazzlings, though? Well, not in the really. Bit, yeah. <laughs> not really, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the, there are two things we haven't talked about yet. One is, once you see the, the spirits of the Dazzlings, you know, their true selves, mm-hmm. does everyone still want uh, Sonata to be their waifu then? Hey, people, uh... Freaky, evil seahorse? It's inner beauty. <laughs> I, I am very weird. I am very weird. Hey, yeah. Pe- pe- people have, <laughs> yeah, people I have would. different tastes. I pe- would. Yeah, pe- people have strange tastes. So I, I ain't gonna say anything. There's an anime about monster girls. So, yeah, you have that. Well, I like, I like uh, last sushi. Week. I like sushi as much as the next guy, but not like that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, but the, the, there's lash fakes, man. There's lash fakes. Oh, <laughs> but but honestly, I I gotta ask you guys. Out of the blue, uh, like, like I always do, out of the blue, which way you rather kiss, a mermaid or a reverse mermaid? Uh, reverse so mermaid, mermaid being what? the fish on fish head. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. Fish head and female parts down below. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So which one you kiss? I'm thinking red dwarf. <laughs> Well, consider that the fish have really big lips. Uh, <laughs> what kind of a question is this? I don't know. And but, then we went into a weird territory. Yeah, uh, he's gone there. He's like, gone there just than our usual. He's he's gone there just for the halibut, and there's no way trout. <laughs> you want to call fit on it, but it's on a whole different scale. <laughs> Oh my god, stop it. And now all, and now all I can say is Applejack on, on bass really is a, a whole different meaning. You should feel guilty for those puns. I'm sorry. Uh, we are I, never going to see the end of this. I, I, I should stop, but I'm hooked. <laughs> uh, I'm okay, glad. guys, reel it in, reel it in. Uh, no, I can't, I, oh, I can't, sh- I can't resist the lure. <laughs> okay, we gotta stop. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad I did that segue. But anyway, after the defeat of the dazzling with the avatar of friendship. Oh wow. Yeah, after <laughs> that, after that, uh their <laughs> necklace broke and they lost their power and they can't sing at all. The, but the implication of that is kind of terrifying. I it mean, is. yeah, okay, they're the villains, all that, everything, but they are never going to recover their forms. They are never going to recover their magic. They are forever trapped in those bodies without the uh, without the, the, the chance of, like, you know, getting back to normal. So what is going to happen with these three now? Are we going to see them again? Are they going to try and come back? Will they pull another uh, Deus Ex Machina from their, uh, from their sleeves? Is like, What are they going to do with them? They're gonna. St- I am not sure if I like this conclusion though. They're gonna starve to death. Good. The end. Kid show. <laughs> A family movie. Uh-huh. But, it's not implied. <laughs> but honestly speaking, like knowing Hasbro and knowing the writing team, if something is really popular and fans are clamoring for it, they will come back in some shape or form. But since this is the movie, for us to see them again is hard. Unless there's a TV series. I think they went to bat and they struck out. Yeah. They're done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and with that, we are nearing the end. Flash Sentry is hugging his waifu and about to kiss. Until the great and powerful Trixie interrupts everything and saves the fandom. Yay. Wait, wait, wait. Actually, I've been, I've been meaning to ask about that because... When I rewatched this, yeah. they were hugging. Everyone was sort of, you know, giving the little hooting calls. Mm-hmm. I don't remember them. I thought I remembered them going in for the kiss, but the, the reason why silver is because you're thinking of an uh, animation or some edit, Photoshop edit that I think Pixel Kitty did. Oh, so they never actually went, even went in for the kiss, which is just pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, we're going to talk about Flash Century for another minute because why does this guy not pursue? Do something, Flash. He's shy. He's I, I think I think the exec- I think the executives at Hasbro are pulling just you know are pulling Flash Century back. It's like now, boy, you are not going to go to th- you are not going to second base in this movie. <laughs> Wait until the third one. This level of platonic, however, is just pitiful. <laughs> well. I, I think. You know, maybe, maybe they are building this up that in the, maybe they are building this up so in the third movie, they put Flash with someone else. Mm. Or I don't know, they Ooh. put Flash with Human Twilight, or they put Flash with, back with Sunset Shimmer, I don't know. It's just that, I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only one who thinks that a trans, transformed uh, pony into human being in, in, uh, romantically in love with, uh, with a straight up Human is kind of like you know weird. Weird. I I don't like, think I, so. I I, I I I wouldn't mind, but this is something that you know that kind that kind of theme is kind of weird to put in a Honestly movie speaking, that is aimed for kids. Honestly <laughs> speaking, from my end, if they do do that, I do like the implications of what might have happened or what's going to happen, like the responsibility for Twilight, for her country and nation 
and her love life with Flash in the alternate universe. That has a lot of potential drama to happen. But nope, we're going to play safe. Safety first. <laughs> yes. But what's next, James? Like, what what do we cover? Like, we we almost see them <laughs> kissing. You, 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 you ask me. Well, I actually do have one topic we haven't talked about, and mm-hmm. it's it, kind of the biggest fault in this movie, to my mm-hmm. eyes. Okay. Ooh. Let me... Go for it. Ha- okay. And it's kind of funny, because since we actually got a short that tried to address this question, but did What are the rules to magic in this world? Rules? <laughs> rules. Every... Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to be going on a spiel about this in a video, but I'll, I'll spoil a bit. Mm-hmm. My, one of my favorite reviewers, Linkara, oh, is yeah. <laughs> c- cited as saying, it's magic you don't have to explain. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I don't agree with that, not entirely. Magic is not like physics in that you can uh, quote the, the equations and sort of the life behind physics. But magic asks you to accept a premise and that there are rules to it. Mm. In some stories, you must know the true name of an object and be able to speak an ancient language to affect magic. In Harry Potter, you had to wave a wand in a specific way while speaking a verbal command to use magic. And say it well, too. <laughs> and say it well. Love you so. Love you so. <laughs> and then there are, then there are other, there are other forms of magic in fiction that usually have some form of rule to them. Equestria Girls, everything happens just because. I pondered about this one too, and a line from the very beginning of the show kind of opened up some windows for me, where Adagio said, girls, do you feel that? That's equestrian magic. So meaning that magic in the human world exists, but in different forms. That's what I'm thinking. But how many times throughout this movie did they say, I wonder why this happens? How could this be happening? I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. There's not many philosophers among them. (laughs) The only characters who enjoy consistent magic with rules are the Dazzlings. They say they get stronger off of negative energy. The more they draw in, the more powerful their song becomes, the more they can make others love them. That's the cycle. And there you go. That's all they do. And even then, they start projecting weird demon holograms or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's the power of the max. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I see. You, you know, Norman, I have to say for, a, I have to say for a moment that you say that it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really need to be explained. That's coming from the guy who plays so much Magic: The Gathering, a card game that has way more rules and makes a lot more sense than any magic that happens in this universe. <laughs> hey, James, I, I, I don't want to bring in my. Uh, blue deck into this. Like, I don't want to bring my Demir deck or my no, but Esper you know what? Into this. But what Silver is saying, what Silver is saying is completely right. There is, there, there is supposed to be a semblance of order in here. You cannot just brush it off completely. Uh, no, I'm not. Is saying... that why someone with this, someone with this much power? Why are they bothering with this high school? Why don't they go to the White House? Why don't they go to the UN? Can you imagine what they will be doing in the UN? Holy. That, like we are this close from mad, you know. Is that, we are this close from dropping the nukes all over the place? What? The, yeah. the, the thing is, James, I, I am in, I am in agreement with Silver here that you need to explain the premise of certain things. Like in this case, the magic for the dazzlings or the magic for the rainbows. You do need to explain it because with certain rules or with certain things being explained and with certain rules being set, it's much more easier for us to follow the story. With what the rainbows are doing, like in this one, it's really confusing where they just play musical instruments and they pony up. In the, call this? In the friendship game, Rainbow Dash just sings and have a pep rally and she ponies up. So there's no lock set rule. Probably in Equestrian games will get more explanation, I hope. But other than that, like for now, we don't have much info. And it's a bit frustrating for people who wants to, well, get the story right, understand the story. Well, it's not so much the story, but the setting. Hmm, that's true. You know, is that when you, you the, the, the setting of Equestria is kind of like a safety blanket because you can just throw magic and all that and you can give it some sort of explanation. 
but most of it can be brushed off at the, you know, unicorns have magic, Pegasi can fly, Earth ponies can make things grow super fast and take care of the land. Easy to explain, whatever, no problem. But when when you put that into the high school setting with uh, without Pegasi, without unicorns, without any semblance of magic anything, when you put magic in there and it works and it does this effect, you have to explain it. Well, I think that's going to be a question for another movie. So I hope they do explain this because I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a disappointment. Yeah. G of G, G of too much faith, Norman. Hey, Hasbro. Uh, I'm not going to even say that word. But anyway, Hasbro. What they are going to explain you one thing: how to reach to their uh, to their Hasbro, Hasbro store to buy one of the new toys. Now available for ninety five dollars. What? Wow. That's expensive. No, but <laughs> yeah, yes, it is. It's but, the entire set. No, the dollars take the car and everything. Uh, but continuing on to near the end, we get well. Since Twilight is moving away, um, Sunset is going to join the Rainbooms. Rainbow Dash is asking, "What can she do?" Well, besides <laughs> singing, she can play a really mean guitar riff, and everyone is at shock. Because she also oh. magically knows how to play guitar. No, I, I, Everyone magically knows how to play something. This, <laughs> this one is easily explained by her hanging out with Flash. Oh, okay. They were a knight them before, so that could have been easily explained there. That's true. So other than that, we reached the end with the girls hugging, saying goodbye, and going back to the portal, and with a nice little outro music. Yay. The end. Or is it? Dun, or is dun, it? Dun, dun. This holiday season, <laughs> because because like Marvel, like just like Marvel, they decided to throw a scene after the credits, uh, which is something I know that Marvel didn't do it for first. They many movies did that, but they throw a scene after the credits where we see the actual human Twilight, who has been keeping track of the weird occurrences that are going on on that high school. Perhaps the first and only moment of. Sensible, oh god, somebody is actually noticing that this place is really goddamn weird hmm. that we have had in the entire movie. <laughs> so true. And yeah, people were excited to see this. Like, people were really, really excited to see this Twilight in this movie. Like, oh, that's the human Twilight. Oh, everybody's like, ah. And yeah, <laughs> she's going to be in the third movie. Yay. And Spice the Dog, for real. <laughs> Which means he won't get to do it. Oh, yes, I didn't ask that question. Spike got vinyl by because she, her headphones blocked the sirens, mm-hmm. which means their evil power can be blocked with earplugs. <laughs> yeah. Just get the whole, just get the whole school to, student body to wear earplugs. <laughs> but, uh, how did Spike communicate with her then? Just, I have this, I'm having, Sign language. I'm having Courage the Cowardly Dog flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly speaking, like people do understand Spike when he talks. He talks like a normal person would. Remember that last scene in the previous movie? Like, ooh, that dog talks. Yeah, but remember the headphones too. Yeah, yeah well, he can't talk to her. Yeah, but when you see a dog standing on two legs and waving his four legs about and yapping its mouth, I, I think you take off the headphones by that point. Who and knows? that's when you get caught by a changeling spell. I don't think so. <laughs> and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> With that, uh, that's the end of Equestria Girls Rainbow Rocks. Yay. We did it. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. We, we're all Yay. still alive. <laughs> we managed to get through it. Yay. Oh, God. <laughs> Norman is Okay, crying. so final thoughts, guys. F- f- final thoughts, because we have been talking about this one for almost two hours. This is going to be one of those reviews, isn't it, Norman? Probably. That it's going to last forever. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, come on. F- final, final thoughts, Ty. You, you first. Okay, well, honestly, I did enjoy the movie. There, You know, there's like any movie, there's going to be mistakes. This one had quite a few, um, especially as we're reviewing it. It's like, oh, yeah, that's a mistake. That's a mistake. But all in all, it was an enjoyable movie nonetheless. Uh, some really good music, like, segments. And... um yeah, I just enjoyed watching it. It was it was fun. Good movie. This movie raises a lot of questions and if you and it's one of those things that you can enjoy it in the moment, but afterwards your mind reaches back and thinks, Wait, that didn't make a lot of sense. Wait, that didn't make a lot of sense. 
Wait, that didn't make a lot of sense. Wait, this is this is how I felt after the first Transformers Bay movie. <laughs> I can't go back there, man. It does a much better job of getting you invested in the world itself. And it gave everyone a little more chance to to have a personality, to play, to be more active. The Sirens were a better cast of villains. So it's fun and enjoyable in my eyes, but that comes with the caveat, a lot of things don't make sense, and a lot of things aren't explained. And that can really drag it down for people. What about you, Norman? Well, as for me, when I first heard of the second movie, I was hyped, because the first one was that fun and exciting. I can't wait to see what they come up next. And seeing the trailers, seeing the shorts, I got myself hyped. And reporting on the news for this movie at the time was amazing because I forgot to mention that uh, we, before this came out, the novel came out for it. And the novel was not a one-to-one retelling of the movie, but instead a prequel to the whole story. So, yay, we got that also. So, yay, they're marketing this really fun. Yeah, I can't wait. And when I watched it for the first time, it, it was fun. I, I enjoyed it. The second time, oh, still fun. The third, it was still fun. No matter how many times I see this movie, I didn't think it was, oh my god, what the hell am I watching? Oh, my brain is melting. To me, <laughs> it was still a fun movie, which entertain me the music was awesome and it was done well other than that i can't see much i just like the movie good for you <laughs> good for you norman you can enjoy the movie something that i that i definitely can uh i'm sorry i cannot wrap around my head the fact that uh, this this uh film was so beloved by so many i mean yeah, if you like the movie and all that more power to you i can't um i, I actually was keeping a glimmer of hope that maybe after one, after reviewing it with you guys I would have liked it more or I would be like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to rewatch it. I'll see how it is. No, not even that. In fact, I will say I'm more exhausted after talking about it than after watching it. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is about this film that it kind of drains my energy and it kind of turns me off from watching this, the third one. It's like, unless they really bring something interesting on the third movie, I don't want it to be, you know, Rainbow Rocks Part 2. It's, uh, it's a... Don't you want to see the reason that they now have a Flash Sentry toy out? <laughs> he, might, he might show well, the those reason... painted abs. <laughs> <laughs> well. you, you know, the only reason why they have the toy out is so that you don't have to build a voodoo doll. So you can have the <laughs> doll already, then you have the voodoo on it, and then you can put... <laughs> no, 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 no. James, James, James. I, I, I have a legit question to ask you. What made the first one okay for you, that you can watch it multiple times, but this one didn't work for you? Yes. And I want to talk about this. This is the uncanny valley of uh, the uncanny valley of Uball, what I like to call. You know Uball, right? Yeah. German uh, director. He di- he directed terrible movies, but the terrible movies that he directed, they are incredibly rewatchable because of how bad they are and how cheesy they are. But as he was getting better, he stopped getting goofy and he started getting boring. Because he was, uh, he actually did a couple of movies that were actually pretty good. Like, uh, if you watch Rampage or Tunnel Rats, they were actually pretty alright. But that's the problem is that the better he's getting, the worse he's getting. It's a paradox, but the, the, the more you improve on that, the more he improved on that, the more boring he was getting. This is exactly the same. The first movie was, like I said, a train wreck in a clown circus. <laughs> it was bloody, awful, and really bad, but it was so entertaining and so funny. That is kind of like, it's so bad I cannot stop watching this. And this movie is definitely better than the first one. But because it's getting better, it's also getting less interesting for me. Hmm. Like, there is less appeal for me to watch it. There is not, that, 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 that kind of like mild stench of bad movie, it's kind of gone. And all that's left is just a dry, dry, dry air in, the, in, in it. It's like, I want you to grab me, movie, but you are not grabbing me. You are not getting to me. So yeah, it's kind of weird, uh, kind of bizarre. When a movie is get, when the movie is actually getting better, it's when I actually start losing interest. I don't know. What does that say to me about that? What does that say about me as a movie, uh, as a movie buff? 
you like <gasps> to torture yourself know. with bad movies? <laughs> Why don't you shut up, <laughs> All right. What I do in my private time is my own in- is of my own interest and only mine. Oh, you wow. don't need to know about that. Oh, so switch off the cameras. Stop recording me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, we reached the end. Yeah, I, I guess we reached the end. We're finally at the end, and final thoughts have been given. So, James, next week, what are we going to do? I have no clue because by next week, uh, that is, we are okay. I'm breaking the illusion of this already. Mm-hmm. We are recording this on the sixth of September. We are six days away from the restart of season five. Mm-hmm. That means we're going to start getting new Pony episodes very soon. Mm-hmm. But we also have the comics. Yeah. And by the way, I, I need to point out something. I need to point out something. By the time that this review comes out, it will be on, well, somewhere around the 17th of September. And next week on the Saturday is going to be the 26th, which is the time that Equestria Girls 3... Uh, friendship game comes out. So, timing! <laughs> oh gosh. You know what? We should do something that we haven't done before. We should let the audience decide what we review next. Oh wow. Oh, I'm afraid of this one. I'm afraid of this one. <laughs> Why? Are you, are you worried that they are going to make us review something that is not safe for work? <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. We need to put a rule on this. We need to put a rule on this. Um, James, lay it on the table first. What do, you, <laughs> what, what do we have to review? Because I don't want something random to pop up where we don't have time to watch it. Let's talk about comics. We, we should go back to talk about the comics. Comics, alright. Like what comics. did you guys think? So, comics is good. So wait, um, we have the comics. What else do we have? Well, we also have Ty and Dog here who does not read the comics. But would be more than welcome to join a discussion about something else. Mm. Just fair. The world okay. is our oyster. <laughs> we could talk about oysters. <laughs> we no. could make more fish puns. <laughs> oh, God. No, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> so, okay, then. Uh, I think we should put it up to the audience then. Like, we have two choices for you guys. First, we have the My Little Pony comics. And the second is the My Little Pony Equestrian Games movies. So I'll put in a poll in the links below for you guys to vote. And the one with the most votes win. Well, anyway, James, take us out. i take you out. What, for dinner? I'm sorry, but I am broke. I cannot take you out. For... I can only take one of you out for dinner. And I am already deciding. Oh, Silver, come on. Let's go out. Oh, God. Oh, don't worry, Norman. I'll take you out. Come on. Yay. He asked me. He asked me. <laughs> Senpai. Senpai. <laughs> 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 And in this train wreck of an episode, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll see you all on the next NBA show reviews. This has been James Cork. I am Norman Sanzo, very confused and very, very, very sad. I don't know how the world works. I don't know how this show works anymore. I'm just, just a guest. <laughs> I must flee. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how. No, I don't know. I don't know how my uh, how my sandbox works anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> I know it's, it's it's a madhouse. Just embrace the madness. This is normal. This is normal. Yeah. That's that's the sad part is that this is normal. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Goodbye. Bye bye. Adios. See ya. Of course. You know it's not a review until you hear that sound. I like it. I really like it. <laughs>